Yay. Welcome. 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 Okay. So I'm going to flip this camera around for those of you who are on Instagram. Hello. It's good to see you. And thank you for being with me on the webinar. And for those of you who are with me on Facebook, I'm so glad to have you with me today. We are going to cover some really good information about iridology as a business. And this is an important question. It's something that you really do need to be aware of. I haven't yet figured out the best place to put my phone. Maybe if I put it right there, I can make this work better. Yeah, I think that's a good one. Yeah, okay, there we go. Still figuring out tech. Okay, so my name is Judith Cobb, and you might have been following me for a while. And Shanaz is with us from Paris again. Hello, Shanaz, so good to see you. We, um, you've, some of you, I recognize your names and you've been with me for a while. You've maybe seen some of my other little presentations on iridology and you know that I'm very, very firmly uh, entrenched in using constitutional iridology in my wellness practice and that that is an important thing, right? And so um, over the past several months as I've done these Instagram lives and Facebook lives and and webinars, I have um, I've come up with a list of questions that people keep asking, and I love you. Got to got to get this right. I love questions. In fact, you will hear my students say, "Judith is so patient. She answered all of my questions. I thought she was going to cut me off and not let me ask any more." And she just let me keep going and going. My feeling is, I don't care whether it's, whether it's a business question or an iridology question or whatever, my feeling is that your questions make all of us better iridologists. Okay, so today let's focus on the business side of iridology. And if you have questions, please type them into the chat. I absolutely do love questions. And... Um, for a couple of reasons, because number one, it shows me that my students are thinking at a deeper level. They're not just taking what I'm giving them at face value, but they're really thinking about it, thinking critically about it and pondering it. And that makes us have questions. I still have questions. I still go back to my instructor who I studied with in 1993. Yes, we are still in touch. And I still go back to him and say, I have a question right? And he is marvelous. He answers my questions. I feel like that's, um, that I pay it forward by answering questions for people as well. So today's session is dedicated entirely to answering questions that you should be asking anyone you want to study iridology with, or maybe you should have asked them of whomever you've already studied iridology with. Now that's important because um, because not all teachers are as open as I am with all these answers. And I'm going to really be kind of bearing my heart here and giving you the lowdown. Having said that, uh, you can adapt a lot of the questions that we're going to talk about today for any holistic health practice. So it doesn't matter what you're going to study. You can turn these questions around. You can reword them and use them in many places. Today, I'm going to start with answering the seven most common questions I get asked. But again, if you have more questions about business, I would love to see them in the chat or in the comments or wherever so that we can make sure they get answers. Now, I want to tell you that what I'm giving you, there are no right answers and no wrong answers. These are my answers. These are the answers that I have come up with from being in the business for 40 years. I started as a holistic practitioner in 1980. You do the math. Okay, yes, this is what I did instead of finishing university to be a school teacher. I jumped ship, got married, we had a baby, and then I started this. And so I've been at this for a long, long time, and I want to share with you now some of the business tips that I and answer some of the business questions that I wish someone had answered for me at the outset. All right. And so here we go. Question number one, and I am actually going to, can I do that? Um, yeah, I don't remember how to do that. So I was going to turn off my screen and, and, you know, let you see my bright and smiling face a little bit bigger, but 
I've just forgotten how to do that. That happens sometimes, brain fart. Okay, so question number one, how does using iridology with my clients help me in my business? Okay, so this is a me-focused question, not a them-focused question yet. So iridology is something that I do with every one of my clients in their very first appointment. So they come in, um, I, I ask, what do they want my help with? I have them sign uh, an informed consent form. I get a quick little rundown of the symptoms, how long they've been there, what have they done to try to get their health back. And then I take iridology photos. Then I pop the photos up on my computer screen and I look at the photos in the context of what my client wants help with. But I may see a million inherent predispositions in those eyes, but if those things have actually nothing to do with what my client wants help with, I don't even mention them. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Okay, so this is really important. I find that by doing this, it actually saves me time. It helps build rapport with my clients. It helps me to understand what questions I need to ask my client in order to be able to get the best information from them to then create the best program for them. It helps me because it's non-invasive. I'm not licensed to draw blood or to do anything invasive. I'm a master herbalist, a natural nutrition clinical, um, cons uh, clinical practitioner and a, an iridologist. And so I can't do anything invasive. So this is a non-invasive assessment tool. And it gives me a deeper understanding of my client's needs. And that is so, so important. You know, as holistic practitioners, we learn um, so many skills that are standalone skills and they don't integrate well with anything else. And so, you know, if you're doing this thing, well, it's kind of on its own. If you're doing this thing, it's kind of on its own. But what I love about iridology is it actually helps me to integrate everything I know. As I'm looking at a client's eyes and I see that they've got particular inherent markings because the irides are inherent, they are not transient, they don't change, they are inherent. And as I look at that, it helps me to understand how things go, where things came from, why this client has the symptoms they have. And I'm able to very quickly and easily then look at how their body is put together and how that impacts the symptoms they have brought in for me to work with. When I understand that, I can work in two ways. I can work on the symptoms themselves and I can work on the root of the problem. So this is brilliant because this is then is very cohesive. I can pull in my nutrition training. I can pull in my herbal training. I can use my life skills. I can use aromatherapy. I can use flower essences. I can use emotional freedom technique. I can pull in so many different skills and choose only the ones that are the most appropriate. Now that's really, really important for a ton of reasons. Um, because, you know, if you're pulling in too many things, you're going to snowball your client. And snowballing your client means they are going to fail. You're giving them too much information in too short of time. They can't absorb it all. They can't do all the homework and they fail and then they don't come back. So the selfish part of this is it helps me to be more effective. It helps me to be more effective in a shorter period of time. Question number two, what styles of iridology have I learned? Way back in the beginning of time, back in 1980, the only style of iridology that was available where I lived and really pretty well in North America was Bernard Jensen. And we, we, we love Bernard, we love the work that he did, we love the way he kept iridology alive, especially during the Cold War years when there was no research coming out of Europe because that was just a brick wall that had been put up. My original iridology teacher studied with Bernard Jensen twice, went to Escondido and studied with him. Then after that, I learned Rayid iridology with um, a teacher from here in Calgary whose name is Chris Smith and she's now retired. Lovely, lovely woman. Then, 
I learned constitutional iridology because the Jensen stuff just wasn't working for me. Originally, when I started learning constitutional, I had come across some, okay, dating myself here, VHS videos and um, some VHS videos. And those VHS videos were produced by Harry Wolf and Bill Cardona. And they taught the constitutional style. And that was where I got my original foundation. And Chanel says there's also a German school. Okay. And I think the German teaches, I want to say, is that the Felke Institute? And that they teach constitutional. They are very constitutional because so many of the constitutional researchers were in Germany. <clears throat> okay. So that's important. So I have studied all of those and I have settled squarely on constitutional being the most important style of iridology in my practice. And I also dabble a little bit in the rayad, but I don't do a lot of that. So question three, which styles of iridology do I use my, with my clients and why do I, did I choose them? Well, constitutional first, rayad second. And you know, when I, when I, I ended up there because as I did the Jensenian and I'd been taught that the eyes would change when we did cleanses, when we used the right supplements, we would see the structure of the iris change. We would see the colors in the iris change. And after 10 years of walking clients through cleanses and fasts and supplements and changing their diet and their lifestyle, I didn't see anything change at all. Not one little bit. And then I was devastated when I learned that one of my holistic healing heroes, Ladine Griffin, had doctored the photos in her iridology book to, to make it look like they were before and after with changes. Yeah, and then I've heard since then that Dorothy Hall has done the same thing. And it just, oh my goodness, that blew me apart. I just about quit doing iridology, but then I heard about constitutional and as I studied constitutional, it made such sense. I had just started studying and I watched these videotapes like a billion times, taken notes. I was working with client photos one evening, saw something I didn't understand. And I thought, well, I wonder what would happen if I called the number on these VH, VHS videotapes. And um, like a Friday night, right? I called this phone number and this guy picks up on the other end happens to be Bill Cardona. And as we chat and we discover that we know we've got friends in common, which is weird because he's in Seattle and I'm in Calgary, like who would we know in common, right? But I explained to him what I saw in these photos. And he said, well, if you see this, you go this way. And I said, well, I don't see that. And he said, well, do you see this instead? And I said, yes. He said, then you want to go this way with it. And he, he knew what I was talking about, even though he couldn't see my the pictures because this was pre-internet days, right? That made it all make sense to me. He understood what I was saying. He was able to teach me over the phone. I was just in awe of the fact that this could happen. And so that is a large part of why I've landed on constitutional. It makes sense. It makes sense from a uh, holistic health perspective. It makes sense from a medical health perspective. It makes sense as far as what we know about how the body actually works. So question number four, why do I love constitutional iridology? Well, aside from everything I've already said, there's ongoing research. You know, there's a, the biggest bulk of the foundation has been laid. There's not a lot of new stuff coming out. And what I found is that um, there is enough new stuff coming out. Something every couple of years, it's like, oh, that is way cool. And you put it, you put it under the microscope, you start using it and you find that it's true, that it's right. It's correct. And you know, and you can run with it. The other reason I love this again is that I've been so supported by my, my instructor and mentor, Bill Caradonna. And because of the, the care and the ongoing support that he even gives me. And I mean, I've been certified as a constitu constitutional iridologist since 1993, but I still sometimes have questions, right? And I go to him and he answers them, but I give that to my students as well. They can continue to ask questions of me long after their course is done because I know how this goes. You learn stuff, you get really comfortable with it, and then your brain opens up and starts asking, but what if, what if, how does, why, 
and those questions pop up. So I love it because I've had so much support from Bill and I can give that support to my students as well. Question number five, this is a really important one, is certification important? And I'm going to answer this in two ways, yes and no. Okay, and you're going, huh, what? Okay, so here's what I'm saying. For many of my students, even practitioners, certification may not be important to them. They may not feel like it's necessary for them to um, jump through all the hoops and becoming certified with IPA is an exercise. It's not for the faint of heart, that's for sure. But your clients probably don't really care if you're certified or not. They care if you know what you're doing. They want to see skill. They want to see that you've got this, that you understand how it works, you can use it well with your clients. And so they almost will never ask for credentials. They just want to know that you know what you're doing and they will know that by the way you handle them, by the way you treat them, by the way you analyze their eyes. Iridology may be important to you as a practitioner, but it might not be. Again, it depends on what you want to do with it. Some practitioners uh, live in areas of the world where they need to be certified and show that they are a part of a regulatory group in order to do anything holistic. So for you, it would be important that you be certified. If you want to be a certified instructor, then of course you've got to be certified to maintain that instructor status. If you live somewhere where there is no government regulation, uh, where you don't need to have a certification to get your errors and omissions insurance, if you, again, if you're a holistic pract uh, practitioner, then you may not need to be certified. So that's totally up to you. Many of my students do the certification exam, pass it, and then they don't renew. They just want to know they could be certified. And so I'm good with that. So for some people, some people need the certification as a way of saying, I've accomplished this, I've done it. And some people don't. So there's no right answer here. There's no wrong answer here. It's what's going to work best for you with what you do. Question number six, what does it take to be a successful iridologist? It takes more than an iridology course. You need to, in order to be successful, you really need to have anatomy and physiology under your belt. You really need to have another modality. So here's the analogy that I like to use. And if you've been with me for several of these, you've probably heard this analogy. And that is... Um, if you have learned iridology, but you don't have nutrition, you don't have herbology, you don't have aromatherapy, you don't have flower essences, you don't have anything else, you only have iridology. That's like taking your car to the, the car garage to get it fixed. So you take it in, the mechanic hooks, up, hooks it up, does all the diagnostic tests and steps back and goes, yep, I know what's wrong with your car, but I cannot fix it. I don't know how to fix it. I only know how to assess problems. I don't know how to fix anything. You have to take your car down to Joe down the street. He knows how to fix them. When we have iridology, and I've had so many people come to me that have done like a weekend iridology course, they, and they say, "Will you? can I talk to you for an hour? Absolutely, I'll talk to anybody for an hour. And they'll come in and they'll say, how do I start a business? Well, do you have anatomy and physiology? No. Well, then how do you understand how all of the markings interrelate, how they play off each other? Mm, well, I know what the markings are. No, you need to know how they play off each other. Do you have nutrition? No. Do you have herbology? No. Do you have any of these other things? No. And the problem with that is they may be able to assess, but they can't make good recommendations. And so I strongly encourage that if you want to be successful as an iridologist, get your anatomy and physiology, which if you want to study with me and certify with IPA, then you have to have A and P. IPA will not certify you until you've got your A and P. Get another modality, whatever that is, whatever makes your heart sing, go with that and then get certified. Okay, so really important that you know that iridology is not a standalone tool. 
Number seven, how can we take our iridology practice from a paid by the hour financially limiting business to a business that does not have an income cap? So what I want to say here is there's a couple of things um, because iridology will help you to get your programs designed in your client sessions. So you're working with a client, they need some diet work, they need some herbal work. Using iridology will help you to do that. And if you do it correctly, iridology will help you to outline a very succinct, very tight program that will be good for the next four to six weeks. It'll be an amount of homework that your client can be successful with. And then when they, they will need to come back in four to six weeks to see you again, to have the next step. Now it's really important because if you give your client everything they need to know to be well for the rest of their life, they will be snowballed. They will be unsuccessful. They will never come back. So you need to, iridology will help you to trim this down and create programs that can be, you can design right in your paid client sessions without having to do extra homework on your own to create these massive programs that no one could do anyways, right? And that's going to be good. Now, the other thing that is really helpful here is to have a product line that you work with. Now, I love Nature Sunshine. I've been with them since 1980, actually since 1979. I've been using their products. You might have other products that you like, but what that means is that when you are doing that iris analysis and you're recommending products and your clients can purchase the products through you or have a membership in your network marketing group, things like that, it adds to your income. I see nothing wrong with that. You know, when you go to a pharmacy, you can buy a generic drug or you can buy the name brand. And the generic one is always slightly different from the name brand. It might work better for you or the name brand might work better for you. And so you want to just, uh, when your doctor gives you a prescription or a recommendation for a medication and they send you to get something and they give you a specific brand to buy, it's because they feel that brand is going to have the best impact on you. That's what we can do for our clients. We can save them from having to go to the health food store, looking at that wall of supplements that has everything from super low quality to super high quality at all different configurations, dosages and strengths and, and carriers and all kinds of differences. And by carrying a product that you can promote, that you can sell to your clients, you can increase your income and you can also make sure they're getting the right thing. That gives you the advantage of, as the practitioner because if your client has a question or a problem with that supplement and you know exactly what it is and you know that product well, you will be able to help them troubleshoot way better than if they're using brand X from the big box store or brand Y from the health food store. Does that make sense? But the better you know the product you're recommending, the more you can actually help your client with that product. And if it's a product that you can set them up to order, order right from directly from the company and you earn a little bit of commission on that, I see nothing wrong with that because someone has to pay for your training, right? Somehow that money's got to come in to cover your training. So there we go. Um, those are my seven questions on iridology as a business. Are there, I haven't seen any other questions come in. Do you have any other questions about iridology as a business? Iridology saves me a ton of time. It helps me get my programs designed in my client sessions. I don't have to see the client, then go spend three or four hours of my time creating a program and then email that out to them or have them come back, back to pick it up. I can outline today's homework in the session. And then when they come back, I can outline that day's homework in that session. And it does a lot of good because it means they're successful from appointment to appointment. It means they want to keep coming back to find what is the next step. And after we get them to a plateau, then we cut them loose. And it's like, you know how to reach me. If you have a question or a concern or feel like you need another appointment, please call. Doing my business this way, I have clients that have been with me for over 30 years. 
I might not see them for a year or two, but then when they have a problem and they want to start coming back in, we'll see them for three or four appointments typically, get them back on track, and then they'll go and do their homework for a couple of years till they need me again. And I love that because it means that I've done good by them, they've gotten results, and they're going to come back the next time they have a question or a problem. All right. So the next go around, I'm just going to tuck this little bit in here. The next go around of Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology is starting soon. It's starting in April. And so um, we've got two sections of this going this time around. And what it is, let me just move one camera and move some things around on my screen so you can see this information. So what it is, is that we have, there we go, starting Thursday, April 16th, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, because we'll be daylight by then, and you can see all the different time zones there, is the next start of this 20 two hour long live webinar program. Now, for those of you who are in Australia, 3 a.m. is not such a great time. I don't think I'd get up at 3 a.m., but we're running a second section. And again, works great for North America. It's a Friday afternoon. Not so great for England this time, but really good for Australia to be 8 a.m. on a Saturday morning. So here's the lowdown. Registration will be opening on February 27th. And if you want to be on the notification list for when this is opening and to get all the details of how it works, please hop on over to iridology.education. You're going to see a little pop-up box that comes up that says, do you want to download an iridology map? And give me your information there. You'll get the link to download the iridology map that will also add you to my notification list. Alrighty, so MP asks on the webinar, if you have clients that come back to you years or so later, is it necessary to take another picture of their eyes at all? Oh, MP, that is a brilliant question. I love the way you think. Yes, it is. Because as iridologists, there's a couple of things. The first off is the iris structure doesn't change. Pigment does not disperse but pigment can build with time. And when pigment builds with time, it shows us new things that are activated in the body that are, may need some extra support. The second thing is, in Confident Nutritionist Dynamic Iridology, we spend two lessons learning about the white of the eye or the sclera, which is very dynamic. And actually, I like to do photos annually to monitor the sclera more than anything else. Because if we've got blood vessels that are getting big and bold and red, we know something is activating now. If we, and then, you know, a year later, if we've done all our homework and we see that blood vessel has calmed back down and has receded, we know we've done some good stuff. So I like to do annual photos of my clients. So if they've disappeared for a few years and they're coming back, I will always reshoot and I will always then compare older photos to newer photos. Really important to remember when we're doing that to take into account, have you changed your technology? Have you changed your lighting? Because that alone can make the eyes look dramatically different. And we do an entire little mini presentation like this um, on cameras and tech and um, how a change in tech can really mess up doing an iris comparison from earlier to later before and after kind of stuff. So MP, that was a fabulous question. Absolutely fabulous. What other questions do you have? Is anything that you're thinking of here? And I'm just going to refresh my Facebook feed so that I can see if there's anything come in there that I've missed maybe because I would hate to do that while anybody else might be typing in a question or yeah okay so it doesn't look like there's any questions in the Facebook group it doesn't look like there's any coming in on Instagram and it looks like we might have dealt with everything on the webinar as well. So thank you so much for being with me today. Again, I encourage you if you want to hear uh, about the 
opening of registration if you want to be invited to the webinar where we'll be giving you all of the details about the course hop on over to iridology.education and uh, uh, register to receive the iris map and that will get you on the list to be notified of when things are happening. Stephanie, who is a student of mine, she's uh, prepping for her final exams, uh, on Facebook has said, Judith's class is professional and thorough. Thank you, Stephanie. Stephanie knows that that is one of my goals. And, um, and so I do appreciate that so much. MP says, would that apply to consent forms as well? You know, MP, I actually do have my clients update their consent form annually. So if they are in for an appointment and they haven't been in for a year or two, they get a new one with a new date on it because things will change, right? Years ago, I didn't ask for permission to share their eye photos in teaching situations. Now I do, for instance. And so as laws change, as people get more litigious, I hate that they do, but they do. You know, as people get a little more um, well, they want to abdicate responsibility for their own health. We sometimes need to update our forms and make them even more clear and even more defined as to what we are going to do, what the client's responsibility is. And in doing that, yes, I have them update their consent forms uh, annually if I see them that often or if it's a longer gap when I see them. And for some clients, it's more important than others. Oh, and that's the truth, right? Some people you know would never, ever want to rock the boat and create a problem. They appreciate what you do. Some people you know might be on the edge. And so I just have everybody do it. I once had somebody tell me when I said, oh, I don't need you to sign a consent form. She said, honey, in this kind of a business, you have your mother sign a consent form. I went, yeah, you know, there's probably wisdom in that probably wisdom. Alrighty. So, and you are very welcome, MP. Happy to answer that for you. It looks like we've dealt with all of the questions that we needed to. And so, been fun being with you. We will be together again, same time, same place, on Friday. And I believe we are talking that day about, and I could be wrong, so watch the Facebook group. Um, and watch your emails. If you're on my email list, I think we're talking about the three foundational constitutions of constitutional iridology. You know, I can tell you if that's what we're talking about or not, because I can look it up really snappy quick here. Give me just a half a second, and then you will be able to know to register. Yeah, we're go I'm going to actually teach you the three foundational constitutions of constitutional iridology on Friday. So hopefully you will join me for that. And we will see you then. Have a marvelous week until Friday. Bye for now.